That's what I was going to note as well. Uh, just the fact that Heroic does seem to have the upper hand on Fnatic. It was actually something I think Kadian noted yesterday in the interview that we talked to him as well, that you know they do feel comfortable in the potential matchup that they have. Um, yeah, I think for both of these teams, honestly, you know, when we talk about VP, I think both these two teams have the tendency of, you know, wanting to push on CT side and take map control. And I think that's really the answer that VP has found, right? To uh, Mithra's point from, from our sports there of, you know, to play a boring style of Counter-Strike. That's very much what Navi used to do, right? And it was boring in some sense, but you still have to figure it out, even if it's boring, uh, whatever wins rounds. Yeah, definitely. And I think uh, at this point, you know, we've got Fnatic opening things up with an early advantage with uh, some aggression in mid. Really like this, you know, peeling off the players before they get to those bomb sites. And Jahini, he would have defended against Storm. He was trying to, in the midst of the mid aggression, trying to find position on the site, hoping that he'd get, you know, at, at worst a 1v1, which he did. But unfortunately for him, didn't go too well. And so now we're kind of on plan C as far as Heroic are concerned. Mid didn't work. That little B of a push did not work. And now it's back to A in a two versus four. It's a scary prospect here for Heroic. Can you set up? They actually are going to get a free site, so it looks like the plan at least is guaranteed. Yeah, no nades either on Fnatic. I was just going to say, I feel like Jaquinho, obviously, first big event for him. He's actually been doing pretty well, all things considered. Obviously, there's a lot that goes into playing in the top level. And uh, it's very stressful in the start as well, right? You obviously want to make sure you don't make any mistakes. But yeah, Fnatic is allowing Heroic a potential in into this round. It's a two on four situation. Bomb goes down now on this A bomb site. Tess is trying to take some long distance duels with that Glock. Both in CT spawn here now. I think Fnatic both have vision on both of them. So that should be a relatively easy round than it is. Fnatic, first pistol round on the board here. Did we do any uh, predictions? Or did, uh, did we talk anything about Mirage? What are we, what are we thinking? Uh, I don't think we did. Um, I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning in favor of the heroic side in this one as much as it pains me to say. You know, I, I want to believe that this is like uh, you know with Chiquinho added in, this is a chance for Fnatic to bounce back. But I don't know, man. History's on heroic side. That what we've seen from them in this event, right? Like their current form is on their side. Um, so it'll be cool if Fnatic can do it, but but I'm leaning in favor of Heroic. How about you, Dan? Um, I think, I think yeah, I think I have to go with Heroic. I think it's just too much that kind of adds up, but... Oh, sorry, um, I mean Fnatic, actually. I, think, I actually think Fnatic uh, will actually win this one. I think there's a lot that adds up in their favor. I think this is this is going to be the one that kind of breaks the the pattern in the stats. Uh, like with these two teams, they've got a lot, a, a lot to say for themselves there, and... They are. This is the map where I think you know heroic really want to be able to, you know, start the series off strong. I think across all of these maps, I like I really like Fnatic, um, and especially on train, I like Fnatic a bit more than than heroic. So yeah, definitely feeling the Fnatic pick at the moment, and that would be crazy, right? Too because it's not like this is a lineup that they've been working with for a long time. They're still. Building it, you know, still integrating Jaquinio, this, you know, moving pos uh, positions around. One thing to note as well is that yesterday, and I think some previous days as well, we haven't really seen that peak form out of JW. And I think one thing that's interesting for me to note about that is JW is one of those players that's had his peak form at some of the biggest events and biggest lands in the world, which uh, to me kind of signals that, you know, it can be hard to replicate that sometimes in an online format unless you're kind of very deep in a tournament and the, the pressure really you can start to really feel that pressure that's something that really helps players like jw really perform so I, I would hope and expect that we'll see a much better look from him than we have in some of the previous days where it's not to say that he's not making good decisions but it's just that there's that extra performance that extra level individually that he can bring that he can start to play with i think when the pressure's really on Play styles like that as well also just benefits from playing offline, right? Because if you have a, even a team like Furia, right? They also benefit from f offline with the playstyle because it's noisy, right? Uh, when you play from home, it's quiet. You hear a lot of footsteps, right? You hear a lot of sound cues uh, from being at home. The only thing you really have to separate that is, you know, the voice comms. But at events, there's just so much more that goes into that. And it's a little bit more noisy, you know, added extra white noise and whatnot. So it makes it harder as well to kind of hear, you know, players, especially JW likes to run around a lot. And uh, online era, you have a little bit more people kind of just holding, right? They're kind of expecting it. Nerves are not quite there as much. It's a nice nade here, though. It's the first weapon round here for Heroic. 
we noted that they did get the bomb down on pistol round and normally we see the tendencies of T's actually buying on that round uh, fully to kind of match up with uh, the CT buy. Heroic uh, opt for a good buy on third instead. It's a slow default, it's taking uh, control of middle here. Oh, look at this apps aggression from Jaquinho. This isn't going to be easy, right? But there's definitely fights here we can look to win with this SMG. They should double swing, so the trade should come in at the very, very least. And it's better than that. They actually get a freebie. Admittedly, one man is low, and there he is finished off by Golden. But there's still more where that came from. Golden, back of the site, trying to buy time for his teammates to rotate round. He does have support in the market, but he's dropped on the entry by Nico. This man in the uh, in the market being Crims on the rotator round from eight. A little bit late to, to help Golden out too much. Now waiting for Brolin over in the apartments to get activated. Yeah, oh. Slavin though is holding that little off angle as, as well. Leaving Crims here in kitchen. He does have the M4. We'll get Nico and he's going for this. Still a possibility, actually now getting a second on Stalin as well, now he's low and it's actually a bad plan, so Tessus is forced to peek. Not gonna happen though for Fnatic, it's the first round of the board from Heroic. It was competitive nonetheless though, just saving Tessus there and Fnatic still made it, did, did a good job on their economy, so we should be seeing a buy. I love that, we talk about Chikinu here, you know, I love the fact that he even has the, the confidence here to go aggressive. Um, Maybe it's a call from Golden, maybe he's just active himself and wanted to take some space. But having the SMG there, I think it was uh, nicely done on the call. Doesn't get the kill though. Oh, and that's Brolan trying to go aggressive here. A ramp goes down. Jaquinho again being aggressive here in the B apartments. Gets the one, gets traded after. Really trying to abuse that. We'll see if that continues. There are some CT sided players that do have that tendency, but back to back aggression. Yeah, I mean, you know, something very common. We we're seeing a lot of aggro out of Fnatic early on, and this is the kind of stuff that you know it, it's what you might be comfortable with. But especially versus a team like Virtus Pro, if you did make it to that grand final, that's where it's really going to cause you issues, right? Because their T side is is all about waiting for that CT aggression. So. You know, it's curious to see if this is the kind of idea that Fnatic are looking to keep up both in this series and the next if they get there. Oh, that flash is really nasty. It blinds the players at ramp. Luckily enough, Stown looked like he was playing anti-flash because he wasn't blind at all. He was able to get that trade. And now tucked in at the back of the site is JW. He's just hiding. He's just biding his time and he's let them all cross. Oh, sneaky little JW. Is he going to get a knife? That's the question we're all wondering. Instead, he's playing for the round win. No knives today for JW, but he has dropped that bomb. It's a stab in the back in a different sense here. Heroic trying to get that bomb out of there. It's running away on Tessez. Stown wants to just stay alive as well so they can play this out 2v2. The bomb's going to go down. Stown is going to be a long way away on this rotate. So there is a temporary little window of opportunity here for Fnatic to be given this, uh, this 1v1 inside of B. Oh. Tessas has dodged it though. Perfect timing from him to get out the way of that window peak. And JW going in alone offers up that kill. And now it might have to be the save for Golden. Left in a uh, in a 1v2 clutch. Now with time for Stown to get set up in the apartments. So this is a bit of a rough round for Golden. I can't believe that they actually get bombed there. JW does such a good job. Fnatic does a perfect call as well. Stack two on the A bomb site. Gets the bomb as well, but. I, they don't notice that bomb is being taken, so obviously they, they spot that when the smoke goes down on Cowwalk, obviously the one guy got away, and that's when you see the run from JW. The timing from Tessus was unbelievable. Did not be expecting that if you JW, you feel like you would be very fast on that rotate over to the worst B, but yeah, I mean, a round that was not looking likely uh, to go in favor of Heroic after this situation right here, the fact that JW also tags Tessus down to low, but they make it work, and that would put Fnatic now on an eco, just Golden saving the M4 from last round. Yeah, it's, it's interesting to note already that, you know, Fnatic really want to fight and they want to disrupt early on. 
and they play mid rounds excellently well, and that's obviously part of the reason why that's a style that can work for them. But uh, we can talk about that more as we see more evidence. But yeah, stack on the A side here, and the AK, or rather the M4, has been passed along to JW. And that's why Golden swung immediately, because they, they want to give, get as many chances to duel with the M4 as possible. However, that may very well be taken out of their hands right now, given the B bombs night occupation from Heroic. Ooh, this could be another gun collected if Bob goes down. It's just a UMP though, so ideal for Fnatic to, or rather Heroic, to try to isolate this player and... and get him on the eco hunt. Find that M4. Would be an upgrade for him, actually. And JW's still alive. He's running for he's running for his life. Saving the M4. It's precious the precious M4, especially for JW, who does want to protect his economy as much as possible. You know, I really want to see how the map is going to change once we get the snipers on the field. Yeah, and uh I think JW can I was just saying maybe, but my math is incorrect. It's hundred bucks out of it. So he actually can't he can't afford an AWP. Jackinio can though, but opt to uh, not drop JW that potential. He would uh, be forced with just having M4 without an armor. So won't be seeing an AWP here for Fnatic this round. We have noted though, Jackinio has been playing a lot of AUG. We saw it yesterday as well on overpass. And he has it again now. And I could, you know, B, B apps is actually a really good spot for an AUG player. So we'll see if he's going to continue to be active over there. Again, he's oh, okay. Okay, you know, I was just like, okay, we're gonna see a third in a row, but he's pacing himself this time around. It is a bit of a fanatic gamble here towards that B bomb site. We spot three fanatic members here. Golden is there. Crims is also there, as well as Chikinu. So putting a little bit less emphasis on this A bomb site, and as we note on mini map, that's exactly where Heroic is heading. So we should be seeing a bit of a retake situation here, not coming from fanatic. Do have smokes and flashbangs, but that's about it. They actually take a little bit more of an aggressive angle, and the rotate does come in on time. Yeah, and I think the Heroic maybe lost their timing here a little bit. We'll see if this is just going to still be a fake, or if it's actually going to be a proper execute. Warp is still over there. At B, so... Big position from Roland, always right in there, able to get just the one before being traded, but maybe that's enough, maybe that's gonna slow down Heroic so much more that they'll abort, and in fact that's exactly what happens, they are going to abort, they've got 30 seconds, which means that it's all up to Borup's lurk here in the B apartments, I don't know that Jack Ineo spotted him here, and he did it, oh he definitely didn't, but he gets the kill anyway, that's gonna tell them absolutely everything, if they didn't already figure it out, and this is going to be a tough one. Nico going down as well. Doesn't even get that frag in mid. Now it's just a measly two players remaining for Heroic. Trying to take this bomb site with no time to do it. And Katie's just going to have to fall back and save the AWP. All, all off the back of, as you say, Robin, you know, Heroic kind of missed their window. Fnatic, you know, Brolan, he hit, he, he got that one kill that he needed to get. And the counter utility was ready to go as well. So that's all they needed. Yeah, and a nice flick there on Jakinu as well. Obviously, if he goes down, bomb site is lost. And we see the same situation here. And it comes to the hand of the AUG again. And yeah, even even Nico here obviously missing that shot onto Golden. That was looking dicey. I, I think if Rogue had hit their timing on the A execute there, we saw as well for Fnatic, they didn't have that much utility. They had smokes and, and one flash each. But to retake a Mirage A bomb site is really difficult. It's around on the board at least. No AWP picked up. Kadian does have one now. And it's another mi mid take. Yeah, slow and steady on the approach, but Tessas is pretty deep down here at the short side. That Molly denies the peak from Golden. And so for the time being, these two are locked in a standoff without ever having seen each other. They're just worried about this short aggression. Heroic in the meantime, in through the apartments with a couple, but also looping back through T-Spawn. So this is looking like it could be an A fake into a B. I mean, really, you could do either at this point, right? You've got all the map control you need to throw a fake in 
and uh, play very, very reactively based on what you hear, what picks you get, what info trickles down. Right. Yeah, they got this little bait and switch set up. It's pretty nasty as well, especially with Cadian spotting a player jumping. Because at this point, you're now thinking, well, if they're jumping for info, there won't be a second player here, right? They're playing this one short setup, one doing the, uh, the jump peak. Doesn't matter. This is what I'm on about with having the map control to play oh, reactively. No. And Borup's going to land the flick anyway, so that little setup's dodged. Now they go back into this A site. Crims is the only man here, but he might be the perfect man for the job. There's the first. Oh, Crims through the boxes is in with a double. And now it's just on to Borup all alone. They're on the bomb, and one tap is all it takes now down to the 1v1. Smoke onto the molly. Oh, rotate in for Giacchino now out through CT, and he's going to drop a smoke on that bomb as well, but not on the defuse yet. Borup, so damn low, just 12 HP. One shot is all that's needed from Giacchino here. But without a fight getting given over, he's got to get on the bomb. There's the spray, oh. and Borup locks it in. The 1v2 goes in favor of Heroic. That smoke as well, Borup places. They get, he, he wants it down to the stairs, but he throws it because the molly's about to expand. Makes it actually in an area where he's actually double smoked off, but he waits and Jakini obviously just holding the angle. I, th I think it's actually to the benefit here of Bora. And we see here as well the diffuse timer just down to the wire. Oh, uh, in the hands as well of a nice round from Crims that didn't spot him, he was by ticket. Gets both of the guys at the bomb site, Bora leaving Bora by himself. Fast mid take again here, just by. Cadian by his lonesome, but it's going to be probably a fast expo play here from Heroic. Just Giacchino here, ready to go. That nade's going to go a bit too deep, I think. Going to drop a defensive smoke. Also, not got the MP9. Able to get some position on the site. He needs a, at least a kill here. That Sekrims will be able to deliver a kill, although Giacchino will be lost as a result. And still going to work that spray. USP out, not ideal. Extra damage to Stown, but unfortunately, oh, they're lacking just the frags at this point. They're one behind. There you go, though. JW is able to trade back, leaving a very desperate position for what otherwise looks like a very good spot here for Heroic. Caden's still alive, though. Down into another 1v1. We've got quite the game in terms of the amount of clutches we're seeing already in the early stages. And the question is whether or not Caden can find a way to win this one. He's got a lot of time. The bomb is down, and that's something that Bronan knows. Bronan, unfortunately for him, does not have any utility, though. It's uh, all a game of timing. Oh, and Bronan, oh, he's done so much damage. There it is. Finishes it off. Great timing on the peak. Kadian not able to hit the shot, and it's as simple as that. And that's another round for Fnatic, and it's, it's just back and forth, gents. Yeah, I mean, all these super close rounds that we see that as well from Heroic's Academy, it's, it's down the drain. And yeah, exactly what we thought, right? We, we were expecting a bit of a more of a brawl of a game, uh, expecting it to be a little bit closer as well compared to the first semifinal we had, VP versus Mouse Sports. I think both of these two teams uh, kind of have share similarities in the sense that they do like to get in your face, especially on that CT side. We, we are seeing our first tactical time up being called. And uh, as, as we noted, Heroic pretty low on money here, so Sure, we might see a potential low buy, but we might also just see, you know, some smokes and some flashbangs trying to go for a bomb plant, potentially. Let's we'll see what Cadian has in store for us here. I kind of know, gents, I know that you have the, the grand final coming up later, but uh, ahead of time, do you think either of these teams is, is able to get past VP? Who do you think is the best odds there? I think Heroic. Um... But I'm not sure. I think both of these two teams will have a difficult time against them because of the the fact that they are so aggressive and VP just likes to play it pretty calm. Yeah. So you could make the argument here of maybe uh, there's a bit of an upset potentially if Fnatic ends, ends up getting this win with the whole thing with the unknown. But I, but I also feel like out of all the teams, I, 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 I have a... Slight re re uh, distinction here of uh, I remember talking about potentially Mouse Force and Heroic in the final, and I I could see Heroic winning that one as well, but I think G I, I think we just teams have a very hard time figuring out BP at the moment. We haven't really seen that in the past few years, especially with the with the old Navi team kind of you know getting out of style with the Zeus era. 
running it down to the wire. So very slow around here. Benefits are working a little bit, having fanatic waste, a little bit more utility. And they do have two AKs here and three deagles. So this is still a very dangerous round from Fnatic. And they just walk through it. No flashes, no nades thrown at all. They just walk through the smoke and they already have full map control. It's a potential retake setup now. As I mentioned, the whole thing with the deagles, Borup with a nice one dig onto Brawlon and bombs going down. Oh, the trades as well. Favoring Heroic. Bomb does need to get planted. It got denied just moments ago. So Nico's got to get back on that. Trying to stick it now. There's the swing from Cat that Fnatic were hoping can be used to deny that bomb plant or at least snipe a man down in the process. Instead, it's left to Cribs in the clutch. Oh, it's close. 2 HP the difference. But Nico just about gets that trade locked in. And Heroic get it done. Just with that AK, couple of Deagles, they're able to find a round. Crims is so nuts, like he almost wins this with the transfer. It's also really funny that Jaquinio, like when you look at that swing on cat and that the long range duel, it's like you just remember that he's got an MP9. <laughs> it just looks really funny. Yeah. But uh, so what, what am I gonna do here? But yeah, that was a that was a great attempt from Crims. Good to see that he's you know he's really awake uh, today so far. And uh, it looks like Heroic is starting to build a lead. It's, it's really starting to look quite difficult for Fnatic on the CT side in terms of their money, but they've opted to go for a force buy, given that they know that Heroic's economy is very low due to the damage that's been done. So they're really banking on converting off of this force buy. I feel like if they don't, if this doesn't succeed, then it's going to be, it could be very well be a quite a landslide half in favor of Heroic. So they've, they're really gambling a lot on this force buy, I feel like. And Heroic is just playing it very slow, looking to see if they can catch something. But Fnatic, one of the things Fnatic do so well, though, is is they make you think that they need to push with rounds like this. But they're very content to play very passively. They're very content to play without info. And they're going to have to set up a round a ramp. This could be the ideal way to deal with what Heroic is doing. You stop them at the ramp, that's everything. Yeah, and it's a good setup as well. They had Heroic gone up to mid here. We just have seen Fnatic push down around here instead. But here we go, Brawl with the first one. We should... Oh, they're back up, so... Information to Dan's point was not there for Fnatic. Otherwise, I think we would have seen all three members from Fnatic kind of help out Brawl on there. But it is a trade, and it forces Heroic to fall back. 30 seconds left, and as we note, Man of the Hour, Jaquinio here, is on a great spot over at the bomb site. See... They're actually going for Cat. That's so smart from Heroic. Knowing as well they don't have B apps control and it's just so many angles to kind of clear. Running through Cat like this instead, you can get a much safer plant while still kind of ignoring the B app options. Oh, but Tessis does a really good job on the clear there. I was looking yeah, very that's... dangerous there for a second. Yeah. And you feel like it's really tempting for Jakinia as well to almost try to like get out of that spot, kind of knowing that there's so many foot of Catwalk. But he has the presence of mind to, to not go for that play and instead instead make sure that he just waits and still uh, that shot came in so fast from Tessus. Really scary round here. A lot of these rounds have been have got, I mean, so how many of these rounds have gone down to a one versus one? Um, either just like actually like a one versus one at the end or, or just like a situation where like a one fight will decide. Win the round. Not like so many of them. Yeah, I mean, it comes down to, I, I feel like, just because of the fact that they do share similar play styles in the sense that they do like to fight and be in your face. So you do see all these kind of scrappy, very close rounds with one versus twos, three versus fours. We've noted as well, Fnatic, there's been two rounds they've been really close on winning on that a bomb site the first round obviously uh, jw being the ninja on the site gets the bomb planner and then heroic goes to b and plants wins that round we have one round with crimson as well getting two guys on the site bomb goes down but one on two situation they lose so yeah it's been very close would argue that heroic has definitely found the upper advantage here in those close rounds benefit to them obviously being on the t side Some other uh, Fnatic has done another good read here. Obviously, two guys now in connector instead of a ramp. Bit more aggressive position. Smoke spades though, so Rose is a little bit smarter waiting for it. Roland just gets the one.
should not be winnable here for Fnatic. Only looking to potentially do some damage. Three on three. I still stick by it. There's no kit. Only JW with a weapon here. And no armor to the Fnatic members. JW goes down here now. But still very close rounds, as we mentioned, right? Even on these low buys, scrappy rounds from Fnatic, but still makes it competitive, at least. It's been 11 rounds. We will look at the deaths. No one is below seven deaths on Heroic. It's just been a lot of fighting. We note that as well on both of the teams with low economy. And uh, still, I was just going to say, I'm hoping that we'll see an AWP on JW. I know that it would have been a glass cannon, in, and it is, but we haven't seen it yet from him. So I think having a bit of a change in pace is valuable. This is something we've seen a lot this week from Heroic, the double boost. Kadian loves to do this every chance he gets over the smoke, corners like this. And people don't often expect it. Yeah, I, 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 lo I love these little boosts that Heroic do. As you say, right, it's become kind of infamous. They do them a lot, like around any corner where you might have one of these AWP on AWP fights. And I love it, man, because like everyone, everyone kind of knows where these AWP duels are going to come in. And so all you need, all you need advantage-wise over the AWP is like that extra, that extra, you know, flick millisecond of them having to change their angle up to where you are to get the drop on them. And I think it's a really nice way of approaching it. We often see it as well. I think one of the more common ones is like uh, Inferno, right? Challenging that CT area. They love boosting on the uh, the wall at, at Top Banana, just around the corner to take the fight to CT. And that's another very, very common orping angle. Just about offsetting the crosshair, even for an extra half a second can make all the difference. Is the B play. They're running it down. They're trying to get stuck in, but there are players here for Fnatic, even a lower flank as well. So Brolin, how long can he stay alive? How complicated can he make things? Not oh, Brolin, it's Golden, man. How can I recognize that charming face? Does he get one and then get traded? That's the question. This is what he used to predict. Doesn't manage that. Instead, he's dropped out of the round. So I'm now getting planted. JW scoped up over here in the market robin you wanted to see this all damn first half and he gets the tag off with it but if they want to keep this orp out it will just have to be the save for jw yeah it's so unfortunate here for Fnatic. i actually think jack does a really good job he's in b apps again gets you know two kills to his name that he has a, a defensive position first obviously you could argue maybe brolin is a bit upset i think stalin that walks out and gets brolin on catwalk before jack gets a trade but he pushes into b apps gets one more and then it's actually Golden that has the position here, really good spot behind Bench, but he actually misses the first shot onto Borok and obviously then gets spotted. Man, it's a, it's a really tough game for Fnatic. I think that they re they've been really unlucky here this half so far. We've had, you know, the two rounds that, we, you know, we could argue that maybe they should have won, and this round here as well with Golden just being very unlucky, not getting to kill on Borok. I think that that would have turned around, around you know, that round around as well. But Heroic again and again and again, these close rounds. Just so dominant. Yeah, let's get a refill there, refreshment. And, and just Maybe the, that's the why the thing. tactical was for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> I the cool the tag timeout to get a refill. Yeah, man. Listen, you can do that. He had a fridge right behind him, you know? He can, he can do that as well when he's dead. So maybe he felt that he's not going to be talking anything this tactical, you know? Leave it to, to Kadian. That's some real like, MM vibes, isn't it? Taking the timeout, like pouring a drink. Or getting food. <laughs> yeah. They're like the classic reasons, man. I just did the same. I, I've noticed that more and more people are doing that, obviously. A pandemic and all. Don't want to go down to the kitchen, any one of us. I also got a fridge in my room now. <laughs> it's just straight laziness, but... Nice. Yeah, it's definitely a shame in terms of, like, how few AWPs we've seen. It really is quite a telling story for Fnatic. Like, how hard the game's been and just how difficult their economy's been. And they've opted to go for, you know, that there was that force buy at like four, oh, I forget what, which, how many rounds ago it was now. But, uh, but yeah, just economy's been really, really lacking. It's always hard on the CT side. Ooh, a little bit labored there for Borup, able to escape though. Drops the smoke too. Howl's going to connect the position and his teammates to have the B site. Could be an AK to be collected if they're able to find, uh, connect the control a little bit later into the round unless Borup disposes of that AK. 
Maybe that's the play here for Fnatic. Maybe it's to try to figure out how they can secure these weapons before they think about anything else. They might be in a little bit of trouble, indeed. Goals in the okay, so now it's the four versus three. They've got some guns, actually, that they can pick up. It starts to become doable. The bomb's only now just going down. There is the smoke and a Molotov now remaining on Heroic. So there might be some openings here if Fnatic are able to find a shot, but it doesn't feel like this is a favorable situation here for JW, and in fact, he will get absolutely railed there by Ston, and Fnatic will walk back with two AKs, so actually not a bad result at all, all things considered. Yeah, best case, right? Saving that, and Jakindra didn't take damage either, so he should be getting a, himself a cheaper head armor as well if he wants. I don't think that we're going to be seeing any heroic members, though, buying SMGs or anything like that. So, might just be able to save himself the 350 bucks altogether. And man, yeah, it was such a brawl in the beginning. It was 4-4. But just because, again, we talk about the economy as well. Being on the CP side, it's just so detrimental to have it in your favor. Nice shot from Brawl there onto Miko. But it's just so difficult then, especially when you're losing these very close rounds. Even if you get the one round in your favor, all of a sudden you lose the other one and then you're back on a scrappy buy. Again, we see JW with the AWP. Love to see that. We'll have himself at least a smoke and armor this time around. So, And an aggressive round this time. Oh no, and he misses. Very unfortunate. He should, he should have spotted both of them though, but we want to pay attention to Borf here a little bit if he has his usual shenanigans. He's up in connector already though, and JW, I, like I said, I think that they sh he should have been spotted, but I say that, and he walks through the smoke. Cheeky. Cheeky indeed. And this could really catch Fnatic off guard here. Oh. Borob, the time oh. might not be great though. Oh. Borob must be hearing that, and <laughs> it's just looking like they're getting surrounded at this point, and they're gonna go down. Unfortunately for Fnatic, they're getting kind of owned on this A side at the moment, and JW's trying to find an escape path. It's the great escape for JW. Ooh, and he will not be able to escape. Tessus has absolutely no mercy. Finds the headshots, and I think, you know, Fnatic are a team that can really play a great T side on, on any map. This is uh, starting to become a little bit difficult, though. Yes. They do have that extra money because of the two safe AKs, so... There is a world where maybe Jokinio could maybe drop an AWP to JW, but it's uh, feels like oh, feels like five rounds is is now. I mean, do we think five rounds will be enough for Fnatic yet? Because that's that's the best case now in this first half. Well, so uh, the the big problem in that Mouse Sports VP game earlier was exactly that, right? That this first half would always be so dominant for VP that then all it takes is like you know the pistol rounds not go your way, and then you lose like one of the rifles, and suddenly it feels like it's GG. Um, so this isn't a lot of room to work with. I think it's even more worrying when you put it in the context that this was 4-3 to Fnatic when they last got, uh, the, you know, their most recent round. So it's seven in a row for Heroic. And within those four rounds for Fnatic, well, one of them was the pistol, one was the anti-eco. You know, in rightful rounds, they've won two in this half so far. So that is a, a pretty dismal kind of situation to find yourself in. Once again, they've got a man down early on. This is a nice response though, right? The all-out aggression over here in middle. Finally, Fnatic take back some control. They get mid, they get the bomb, and now they're set up in a three on two. So maybe looking to do good on that promise of a 5-10 half. Actually, that's a good note here as well, this last round, because this is normally something we tend to see a little bit more from Fnatic, a little bit more aggression, and they, they, we haven't really seen it. Maybe arguably it's because of the, the low economy of what, and whatnot, but I think this is really what, we, what I was expecting at least from Fnatic, just very much a little bit more in your face. Don't let the T's get so much map control for free. And at least this time around, it pays off for them, hopefully. Three on two situation now, and they have bomb control up in mid. Stavin making his way through B catwalk here. We'll see if timing here is on Crimson's side or Stavin's side. AWP, there is probably nothing. Oh, 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 oh my god, okay. Well, Nico goes down as well, so just leaving Stavin here. One of three situation. Gets the first, but not gonna happen. It's five to ten in favor of Heroic. Fnatic being on that CT side, not getting economy out in their way at all. Um, we'll see if they can uh, do a potential comeback here or if this is gonna be the first map win for Heroic after the break.
We are back with the second half of map one between Fnatic and Heroic. It's the second semifinal we have today. Mouse Sports and BP was the first one. BP dominant showing there. Quick 2 0. And uh, Heroic, no slouches here either. 10 T rounds. It was a bit of a brawl. You'd argue that there's a lot of rounds there on that Fnatic CT side that they probably feel like they should have won. But nonetheless, we swap over. Fnatic on this T side now. Brawl on with the set of nades. Golden with a Deagle, and it's looking like a B executes. And for Heroic, we talk about the A retakes on this map, but this is going to be a B retake instead. Bomb goes down. Five on five situation now. Just one smoke on Tessus. Looking for a, a lot of hit shots here, both of these two teams. Ooh. Oh, it all gets weird when you're getting close up against the Glocks. Heroic, uh, just about outmaneuvering them for the time being. It's left to KD and two in the apartments. Oh, now just one left in the apartments. It's Golden up there. The kit retrieved and the smoke as well. Smoke onto the bomb. Golden in with the peak. Oh, oh, he's going for the knife. Oh, no. Oh, no. Golden. Heroic get the round, they get the defuse, the knife, the thing that Fnatic can always rely on. It betrays them in the it's, 1v1. It's one of those games. It's one of those games. Fnatic just not getting anything going for them. Oh my god, he's so quick on this too. <laughs> get the first, but then kind of, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You live by the blade, you die by the blade. That's just how it goes for Fnatic, we're afraid. 5 to 11 now. That's heartbreaking. They're going to invest. They're going to buy. You know, good reason to. You get all the kills. You have extra money on Golden as well. But man, that's rough. Yeah, you're... This is like one of those games. I mean, props to Fnatic if they manage to come back from this map. It's been nothing but an uphill battle for them. And they do buy here though, obviously, they get the bomb down. And normally these rounds are a little bit favored on the T side, but it makes it a three on three. Bomb's not down yet, but it's just about to. Good positioning here as well, and a good got bomb plant. Normally as well. If this was Flush Eye in Brawlin's position, he would be going up in mid here now. We see instead the swap. This used to be Flush Eye, very notorious for that, but it's Brawlin now instead. Going up in mid, and now I'd argue that this is a very difficult retake situation from Heroic. But we'll see. Here we go. Flash in. No nades left now. Roland obviously just pacing himself, waiting. Gets the first onto Nico. He's going for a fake defuse. And yeah. Good round here from Fnatic. Sure. <laughs> Brolan dies somewhere. I'm not quite sure where. It drops in mid or something. But... Makes it a one-on-one, -on -one. we keep it in the same trend and fashion that we saw in the first half with very close rounds. Yeah. Did he try to do the, the window jump from I short? I think so, maybe, and yeah. died. <laughs> and missed it, oh, no. falls to his death. He's thinking, like, what's the worst that can happen? Oh, hang on a sec, that's the worst that can happen. <laughs> he did, it's yeah, I see good. it there. Or, I don't know, did he? I don't, that looks so weird. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Brolin in with the mystery death. Still well, Fnatic stealing that round away, and that's what's important here for them. If they wanted to get back into this game, that is a, a real, you know, that's like a stride in the right direction. Now, you, now you've got to pick up some speed, you've got to do the rest of it, because it's a marathon, not a sprint, to catch this game up. Yeah, it's kind of, it, this is kind of the best case scenario almost. Like, you never want to lose a pistol, but if you're going to lose a pistol, just like winning after it. And also, JW got that money from, or uh, Golden got that extra money from the, the knife as well. So there are, there are definitely some positive things that have happened, and they're set up well to to take an uh, to rather to take momentum in this game. So I think for a competitive map, which I think we want to see, we, we need to see Fnatic obviously having a, a pretty clean round here, not leaving it down to 15 seconds before they've killed anyone or taking position. Um, you know, winning the rounds and, you know, winning that first gun round. And, and then we're off to the races in terms of a really competitive map. And, and, and I feel like a lot of the previous things can be forgiven at that point. But they, they've got to get there first. And it, it's it's harder than than it sounds, especially given that there's Deagles, there's an MP9, there's, th there's a couple smokes remaining as well for Heroic. And I was talking about Fnatic leave, you know, waiting for too long. And it, it, they have waited a very long time right now. And Heroic don't care. They just haven't really moved. So it's looking scary. Once again. 
Yeah, we saw this for Gamble Fnatic yesterday versus Cloud9. Just taking their sweet time on this T side. 20 seconds left, and I feel like, sure, they might be winning these rounds, but they're not giving themselves a lot of cushion in case there is a mistake. 15 seconds now, bomb's about to go down. Should not be a heroic round. It's not looking very likely here. But this is, I, you know, I'd argue here that this is definitely like a, a change for Fnatic for me of having a little bit more rounds where we kind of go very late round. I guess if teams are expecting Fnatic to be notorious on the on the aggressive side, then maybe they found themselves uh, a potential kind of stop gap here of what if the aggressor doesn't work, we need something to rely on or fall back on. Maybe this is what Fnatic is trying to practice on right now. Seven eleven, heroic, two K across the board. So next round as well, won't be seeing an AWP on KDM unless he gets some nice kills here or maybe a potential knife. So good start here from Fnatic at least. Another mid stack here from from heroic. It's looking, uh, looking like a good, stable couple rounds so far. Starting to build up that money. This is obviously the round that builds the most money here. We need to make sure they don't lose any players. Do have a great push towards this uh, B site now. And know where one of the two remaining players is. You can probably assume that one of them's on B. Or the last one's on B. Let's see if they check this. Kadian, he really wants to try to catch someone off guard. And that's exactly what he's going to do. Making it hurt. This is, this is mission accomplished for Kadian. Oh, an extra oh. kill? That is nuts. That's a little bit too much damage, I think. But it's not it's not game-breaking or anything, but it's definitely more than, than Fnatic wanted. Yeah, we said he needed some kills, and he got two kills, so he actually can afford himself an op now, just because of that. Oh, wouldn't have really? been able That's to. Crazy. Yeah, he wouldn't have been able to if he just got the one kill. Getting the two, and he does get the glass cannon. So yeah, we thank you know, Kading. Thanks, Fnatic, for that. That was an A bomb plant, and get Kading getting the two kills there. Nets in the op. We'll see if that's going to be uh, detrimental to this round or not. He is over at that catwalk area. Oh, oh, <laughs> golden. That looked sick, actually. I think yeah. that was. Maybe potentially both of them flash as well, so maybe a little bit lucky there, but JW almost shot Kadian's head off. Oh. oh, I don't like it. There's a lot of smoke fighting going on over here in middle, but finally it's kind of tapered off. They're going to try the palace aggro. Now they run into Crims. There it is, a second kill, leading this even further in favor of Fnatic. Just one man left towards this A bomb site. We're looking at Stown to have to give us something spectacular. If Heroic do want to hold on, if they do want to even attempt this, because right now it's looking like a save, and they're just kind of saying to Stown, yeah, if they come B, we got two here. If they go A, try get as many as you can, and then we'll see if we want to go for it. Getting one and getting out of there. Now, this, this is definitely going to tempt Heroic. Ooh! Maybe even further in with all this damage happening through the smoke. But with that fight not going their way, now I imagine the save call is pretty solidified. They might just have to give this one up. So now Fnatic are, are, are more than back into this. 11 to 9 at the end of this round. It's, yeah. taken, the, it's taken a lot of effort to get here, right? But, but they are carving this path. And this second half of Heroic has not really yielded too much just yet. Yeah, and... Uh... You know, as we talked about as well, for Fnatic, you could argue that maybe this would have been very, a lot more dominant had Fnatic not had these scrappy rounds on that CT side, but this is a really good round for him. Quick mid-take as well, Heroic again, we talk about how active they like to be on that CT side, and that's exactly that. We swap some people in mid, we get an expo flash. Golden, I believe, gets Tess's fully flashed, but he might have also been in more of an anti-flash position. First, a big round, though, from Fnatic on this side. And we talk about weapon round versus weapon round. Very important round for Fnatic there to win. We do have two saved weapons, though, and one of them is the AWP on Kadian. Forts himself a half armor for this round. Mm. 
another mid take from Fnatic. They're going from uh, from top mid. Not a lot of people from from uh, underpass. We do know that Heroic have four members on this A bomb site. So in terms of making the right gamble of bomb site, so far they made the right play. It's a lot of time left on this clock. And Tessus with the aggressive push. Is he going to get crims? He won't. Down to 12 HP, and that's an important kill for Fnatic. Him going down, force Fnatic to kind of just go into B or in mid. Now it gives us more options, even though that's exactly where it's looking likely it's going to be heading to anyway. B split. Bomb risky position here, going up in cat. I would tend to see that with only two team members. But with Worf going down there now, it should be a relatively safe Fnatic round. All three remainder heroic members are in mid towards A, and then there's just Nico on the flank with the CZ. Hoping to maybe get a kill. No kits either, so sure, Stalin getting a kill on Brawlan. Still won't be seeing a heroic play here, a potential retake scenario. It's all about trying to save the weapons for the next round. And are we, are we edging one, one team over the other here? Because, you know, Fnatic are really building up a lot of momentum. And I mean, this is how comebacks yeah. happen, right? On the yeah. T side, where you just you can't get any econ economical grip on the CT side, and you just force every other round is like a round like this, and then every buy round you get, it's not even a full utility buy. Just a very tough spot to be in. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened with Fnatic. And Fnatic on that first half, and they scraped together five rounds, and now they're five up. And they've only conceded one, which was the pistol. So absolutely no success for Heroic here. They're going to have a big buy. What are we looking for for Heroic to to have a better performance? You know, what do they need to do here? They, they have this full buy coming in. I think we just hold one one round. I, I think the first buff round they had, they wanted to try for go for an aggressive mid play, which is, which is totally fine, obviously, right? But I think with the economy being the way it is and Fnatic as well, knowing the tendencies that we've seen this week, there is a possibility that they will go a little bit slower, and they have been really slow on the time when they have done that. And we saw that yesterday on Heroic as well, being very good on keeping the utility for late game, especially on a map like Inferno. They argued that one of the reasons to as to why they won that map yesterday. If we can see the same here, we have a double op set up here from Heroic actually this time around, and an all Bora. Very strong buy here now for both of these two teams. And I, might, I actually might love this play from Heroic. It might be just straight into a fast A execute kind of play or just a walk up. Just to catch Fnatic off, or Heroic rather off guard a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be a bit of a timing play here. Brawlin is about to land that smoke over towards that connector area. And here we go. Just a one flashbang over. Nico in a good spot, but Brawlin shoots his head off. Full on Brawlin on this bomb site now. Same flick on the entry. Tessus, he's dodging around the smoke and the crates here on the site, and he's causing all kinds of problems, buying loads of time for his teammates. And he's just up on the box, and another crazy flick. Jokinio this time is the one to deliver it, as Kadian is going to be blocked off by that smoke. So even though it didn't really seem like there was much for Fnatic to work off of, now there may just be a chance. Oh, that's a great frag, though, from Borup. And JWs well and truly locked out of the bomb site. And at this point, with no player to help him out, you oof, don't like his chances. Great shot, though. He might be able to get out of here, able to escape down the ladder. Now it's on. Now JW has a chance. He's got some position to work with. Looking for a flashbang here. He knows they're closing down on his position. Another great connection. We talked about it. JW, he is going to lift up the spirits of Fnatic with an incredible clutch. And oh my god, that's got to feel horrendous for Heroic. The fi Finally a round where they felt like they were going to win, and JW steals it all the way. Yeah, I feel like they get a taste of their own medicine there. Kind of what we saw happen to Fnatic on that CT side as well. Frustrating round as well. We talk about, you know, how close this game is getting. And especially in the later stages as well. Obviously, we talk about the economy just being so important. Fnatic will tie up this game now. Oh man, it's a bit of an interp there. You know, you'd argue maybe that wouldn't have happened <laughs> at an uh, offline event. You know, even in my opinion, there was a uh, pass the ball, but it happens. 
we talked about it too, you know, like JW is stepping things up here in uh, a more pressured scenario, and he's really doing just that. He's, he's delivering some excellent moments here for Fnatic. 11 to 11, that's the round, that is the round that ties up the game. Double yeah, up here for Heroic. And Tess is aggressive in mid here as well. Trying something new here. Stalin with an aggressive angle as well into Palace. And that's the, that's the start that Heroic needed. They get the entry, they still have the double up set up, they have some nades left. Fnatic as well here. This sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even information play here, right? I think Tessus will make his way, and we see the rotate here as well, coming in from Cadian, and here's the push from Fnatic. You'd argue that timing actually is on their favor here. Nico goes down again, it's the same angle we saw last round. Brolan gets his head off once more, but are they going to be expecting such a fast flank from Tessus? Tessus has got to be the hero, and he doesn't get anything done from the rap heroic. They, they kind of spent so long hoping that that flank was going to find something. And now they're in, well, two or two on two, thanks to Cadian on this AWP back here in CT Spawn. Are they invested? Are they interested in going for this one? JW's low. Fnatic deciding to double up over in the palace, and it is all left on to JW again. This time, though, the odds stacked against him. Smoke going onto the bomb. Oh, no, now they know where he is. JW, the last, uh, the, yeah, the last one. No idea how he got away with it in the clutch. This time, they don't give him the room. And he didn't have the HP either. So Heroic, they do actually recover that, right? Considering that when the bomb goes down, that's a 2v3. Important kills from Cadian over towards CT spawn. And then Borup coming in from jungle there to, to deliver alongside Cadian. Yeah, nice retake here as well. Love this Molotov from Cadian here as well. Kind of forces Brawl into this position. Snaps his head off. Her body rider, but that's a great entry again. I, you know, we, we talked about Brawl and how snappy his aim is, and Nico, same position two times in a row, forced now on an SMG. Oh, and Heroic again trying with the usual shenanigans. It was Tessa's last round, Kadian maybe whipped it a little bit, ends up dying, but here's when the SMG comes into play. Very aggressive here early on. It's only been 25 seconds of this round, and we have three members dead on this map so far. Not the start you want in Heroic. Talk about the economy for CT side. They get the one round, but they have to string rounds together. Them losing this one, it's not going to be great. Oh man, just Borup alive here now. It's gonna be 12 to 12. Again, money advantage to Fnatic. And just because they've kept four alive here as well, you argue as well, yeah, sure, Fnatic, even, even in the sense of for Heroic of getting a, a win, you're not going to be putting Fnatic in a position where they're going to be forced on this, like, low scrappy buy. It's going to be another strong buy, even if they were to lose the, the one round. Really a situation here when you argue of, you know, if there is a possibility or if you were expecting maybe Fnatic not to win this, like, they are definitely in the driver's seat here now. Yeah, it, it's crazy because, you know, you see that first half, and think, oh man, Fnatic having such a hard time, and you look at this one, and, and Heroic aren't getting even remotely close to some of the successes Fnatic were finding on their, their troubled half, but they were still able to win the clutches and put this, you know, put it down into those clutch moments, but here it's been, I mean, there's been a few, a couple big moments, but still Fnatic looking very confident, and we talked about it earlier, they're, they're a team that's very good at dealing with very difficult games and where they're not getting very much staying focused and once again they're up against the pistol. Come on with the swing oh that's a swing and a miss and that's an ak for borup you'll be quite happy about that one there's two players there too so this uh, might start to be a little bit problematic if they can't get control of Ladder room, then are they going to want to go for this push in the It looks like they were going for the split. Still time, and there's a pickup. They might not expect. Okay, they know that there's a no one. Yeah. Next. They, know, they know it's Borup, yeah, and he didn't kill Borup yet, so he's going to just dodge back into the site. This is a smart move from him. Ooh, that AK is really paying off. Yeah, but I wonder here, they're going to go into a potential here of Tessus. 
And all three members from Fnatic are coming from, from Connector. You'd argue that maybe he should be getting a one kill here on the bomb plant, but JW is smart here, puts the smoke down and not going to give Tessus that flexibility that he wanted, but he's going to spot J. Oh, oh no. Oh, he missed the first one. Oh no, this can all go down south. Jaquinho here now in a one on two situation by his lonesome. It's a good spot though, but it's a bad plan for him. Oh, he hears Kadian though. Oh, they get off the bomb. And and now now they need this kill, right? Time's ticking away. Kadian's low. Jaquinho's been given a little bit more room than perhaps they should have. They're sticking it. The spam does damage. Oh. And the Glock's going to finish it off. If they just stuck that the first time around, that, that could have been a heroic round. And, and I think they realized that a little too late, right? Suddenly... Kadian finds himself trapped in connector and essentially he's in a position where where he has to give over like this 1v1 fight He tries to just prolong it for as long as he can like look He's not even fighting. He's just trying to scare Jaquinho away land the pre-fire Anything to keep him locked in that engagement while the defuse is coming in But yeah, a bit of a mistake, right? They were already what like four seconds into the 10 second stick when they get off the bomb at first, it looked like maybe the idea was to pin the Jaquino, take the fight, and then they realized the guy in the site just doesn't have that angle, just doesn't have that ability. And so that clutch comes up in favor of Fnatic. It's a damn good try from Heroic, right? Especially that, that lone deeg play, delayed, passing around the smoke, lining up the double. You thought that was going to be enough, but it just wasn't. Yeah. And another entry here in favor of Fnatic on this round. JW clears a very aggressive angle here as well on A. And Kadia misses that shot. Gets a little bit of flash here, but three on five situation now. Fnatic making their way onto this A bomb site. Smoke goes down as well here. Man, what a turnaround here from Fnatic. We talked about it. Yeah. Let's grab the counter strike, well, but that's really where they excel at, right? And uh, 14 to 12 now. and. It goes in the hands of, you know, I think it's Sapphire that's observing this. Maybe we can get a, a tab here during the tactical uh, just to see. But yeah, when we come in the hands of, we talk about the economy, CT side, stringing rounds together, doesn't happen from heroics. Even if they have the max money lo loss bonus, just the fact of, you know, them being able to rebuy these like strong utility buys with the AWP on, on Kadian just doesn't happen all too often. Only seen it twice. And Fnatic, obviously, again, with just a very dominant showing so far. Man, it, feels like, um, it feels like they've been so willing to to fight Fnatic, and that's definitely worked to Fnatic's favor, right? Like, we even see, in terms of how they're, like, approaching this right now, it is pretty slow, pretty measured, waiting for Heroic to give the kills away. The only reason that worries me is, like, I, I, I'm just thinking about it, and I think that if, if Heroic were playing this CT side ver versus VP, that I don't even think they would have two rounds right now. I think they would have zero with the with the aggression they've been giving, right? Obviously, within the context of this Fnatic matchup, you can understand it a little bit more, but Fnatic are responding to it really, really well. And, and if anything, it feels like it's causing Heroic a great deal more problems than it is creating space at this point in time. This is another slow round from Fnatic because they know what Heroic have been doing in these kind of rounds, right? They have been throwing in aggression, be that at mid, be that, you know, trying to get stuck in over towards apartments or or at least just fighting middle, right? There's always been players at short, connector, window, keen to take engagements. And it just and it just hasn't really worked for the Danes yet. Yeah, and this is also another round here where we're talking about we have to hit the shots. And if anything, this is a round that we would want to see heroic aggressive on. Not a lot of utility, so they need to get some rounds and being able to go defensive, maybe put a crossfire setup. The last thing you want to happen is for Fnatic to potentially pull the execute on you here now. It's not going to be great to try and hold a bomb site like that. And JW here is just up by his, by his lonesome on Cat and Jakinu causing a lot of noise here as well in the apartments. Gets both of them. Man, I'm, I'm super impressed by Jakinu this week. I, I think, you know, it's a lot to ask for as well being new on the team. And these are a lot of big names on the Fnatic roster also. Having a chance to go and play for the guys. JW talked about it yesterday as well. He feels like they're one of the teams that does a really good job with developing their players, as we have seen on Brawlan. Looking to replicate that with Jaquinho. Matt, point here now from Fnatic. 
Yeah, the, this it, it's interesting too, Fnatic. You know, one of the qualities I think that that helps them out so much in as a team, just and I think it's, it's always been this way. It's always been the style of you know Crims JW. Obviously, I think Golden also really took to this too, uh, coming up from Fnatic Academy. So just this ability to be always comfortable in a mid round. There's a lot of teams that that don't. They kind of think about the game in a more structured approach first. And Fnatic is, is always happy to for things to go just to shit, <laughs> effectively, and then to kind of figure it out on the fly. Whereas, and then they really excel there, and and that really is so helpful when your game plan's not working, when you're when you're having uh, uh, unfortunate rounds, and it's something that also I think just adds to this quality where they don't worry as much, I think, because they always know they can just fall back on themselves and, and as as teammates. Looking to close things out here on Mirage. Some B-Abs presence. Of course, Crims on the lurk there in the palace position as he has been. In the early stages of their default, he's he's very often going to be there. And Heroic, they're feeling an A-Ramp aggression, perhaps an A-Set piece. They got a two-man setup there. However, Fnatic are playing a really slow pace here. Just very uh, kind of moderate pressure to begin, th uh, begin. and we get to the minute mark, we can see now the uh, rotation towards middle. They've given up the apartments. So it tends to suggest now that we're going to see them after mid control either resetting into an A take or just trying to go for a connector play. Let's see how this goes. Two men on ramp. It's actually a pretty good positional setup for Heroic to deal with this. If they yeah, spot normally it in when time. I was going to say, normally what happens here as well, you tend to just take B ramp control when you have positions like this. This is a really good setup here from Heroic. We'll see if Fnatic clears all these angles, but Kadia misses the shot. That was super important, but Tessis with a, almost a three-man spray down. Golden down to 17 HP. It's a two-on-two -two situation now. Stalin very quick on this rotate now. Buy tickets. We have both Heroic members coming from here as well. Borg as well. Leaving JW now in a good spot. Oh no, he missed the window jump. He wanted to try and get up to short to play that post plan, but instead, he's going to have to do it from connector. JW, they tap the bomb, hoping to bait a shot, and it will. Now they know the terrible truth as to where this orb lies. JW, little to the left. Oh, that's not what I meant. Oh, it's the tag, but not quite the killing blow. That is close from JW, but close doesn't matter. In this game, 13 to 15, Heroic trying to get back in right at the final hurdle, trying to get it to overtime. Two away, which must feel like an eternity to the Heroic guys. Man, he, he shot his dick off. That's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> that really felt, felt like a kill. Oh my God. That looked like a kill to me too, yeah. Man, that had to be like close. pixels off, man. Pixels off a body shot. Heartbreak there for JW, and that player wasn't even low enough to get killed by a leg shot too. Well, we got a, a, a push there from Kadian through the under. Man, I'm blanking right now. Help me out. I'm gonna call it under pass for now because my brain's not remembering callouts. That's fine. The boost there trying to capitalize on this smoke and try to play counter to the setup and connector there. Tessus will get away, and we know how James he is. And finally, Kadian will reveal himself. And this is this is the problem right now because they're going to regress back into mid to get the swing off of Cadian's pressure. However, it's not looking good for heroic after all said and done. Stalin though able to win his duel against Crimson. He was lurking out towards A. You can always expect it. And all of a sudden, just like that, heroic flipping the round on his head, and it's going to be a very desperate run here from Golden, looking for the one versus two clutch. Has to get the bomb down first. He will be able to do so, but doesn't know how close the CTs can be, I think. So that always makes it hard to know how to do your post plant positioning. And he has to assume that they're close at this point. Oh, we. Oh, that's 4 3, three maybe. 4 3 indeed. Brolan called it though. He's like, hey, listen. 10 EDP is on the <laughs> left. 15 14. I love that from, from Heroic. We saw the early on aggression. They don't stop. They just keep on refilling with members. Obviously, we have the one guy go down, but Kenny is coming from underpass, obviously. Again, the flashbang comes in. Tess is still here as well. And while we have a lot of Fnatic members here, I just love the fact that it's a call made from Heroic, and we just have to continue to fight for it. That's okay. a close one. Two versus three, but yeah. I mean, this is round number 30 now. 
overtime? Is that is that the call? Is it is it happening? I don't know, man. But it, it's definitely possible. Just one more round for heroic. They start. They're starting to like. Feel, you can feel the confidence from them, especially in in the last couple of rounds. Some of the fights they've been taking and winning is a very good sign for them and their prospects here. But they definitely are not winning the utility game. We can see right now there's a huge disparity on that. And Matic have been playing a way slower pace in these recent rounds. Oh, that's a bold swing. Sound not ready at all for that one. And that's huge pressure that's going to draw rotation. And JW picks in mid as well at the same time. Okay. No time looking less likely now, but we'll see if Heroic can cobble something together. Oh, it's going to be rough, though. Tessas has been good at these big heroic moments over towards the A-bomb site. We're going to need another out of him, but it's only one presenting itself. So, Kadian and Bora, pressure is on. Two versus four. Not a retake yet, but that bomb is getting planted, and here it is. They've got to get back into this site somehow, some way. Little bit of utility split between the two of them. This smoke and molly combo could come in real handy. So it's important. Kadian doesn't die. Oh, but there it is. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. And there it is at the end of the game. Jaquinho to close this one out. 1-0 one oh in favor of Fnatic. 16 to 14 on the map pick of Heroic as well. And that's on the back of a game that at one point was 11-5 to the Danes. Fnatic, they turn it around somehow, some way. They remain resilient. They pull it together in that second half. And now it's them in pole position, moving into their map pick. Yeah, and it's a map as well that we know that Heroic has been